Hey everyone, this is Pastor Bell. Um, I'm doing uh, a short sermon from my home office this week. Uh, like a lot of you, this has been a very weird week, um, a very uh, week of upheavals and changes and watching the news probably way too much. Um, it's just been weird. Um, I'm technically on vacation, um, but I really didn't get to go anywhere uh, because so much of what we were planning to do got closed down or canceled. And, and that's okay. We're fine with it. Um, it didn't affect anything in our lives uh, majorly. Um, but one of the side effects of this is is not being able to get a camera in front of Pastor Karen Buck this morning. That's my fault. Um, there are a number of things that just did not work, but ultimately I, I probably should have planned for something different um, while I was here. But so today I'm going to do a message from my home office. But next week, by next week, we will have uh, ourselves set up to live stream our services. Um, I don't know if we'll meet in person, but either way, whether we meet in person or whether we have to close down the church plant entirely, uh, we will have digital worship. We will have digital live streaming available for folks. Um, just keep looking for news as we go. Um, to see that, if you're going to stay home or, or, again, if the church is closed entirely, um, find our page on YouTube. Um, our channel on YouTube, excuse me, or find our page on Facebook, like the page on Facebook, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and you'll be able to see all that. I will put links below or above this video, wherever they show up on the social media formats. Um, I'll also put a link on our Instagram feed um, so you can go to those as well. Um, but for now, I'm going to do a short reading from the Bible and a reflection on that. Uh, to at least give some folks who are at home, um, who chose to stay home um, from physical worship, which is totally fine, um, something to think and pray about. Our reading for today is from Matthew 5, beginning at the 31st verse. Um, I encourage you to go and read that. I would read it till the end of the chapter, um, but I'm going to read a few verses here now and, and reflect on that. So Matthew 5, beginning at the 31st verse, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and the Son will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty, or gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick and in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of who these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. So I chose that passage because um, I think it applies very directly to what's going on here in our society today. Um, you know, unless you've been living under a rock, um, you know that a lot of uh, social distancing is going on. Uh, to put a broad term on all of it, you know, a lot of uh, all of our sports have been canceled professionally, collegiately, um, even on the local level. A lot of groups are canceling their meetings, uh, in-person meetings. A lot of churches are shutting down. Um, this might be the last Sunday that St. John meets in person for a while. I don't know that for sure, but we're just planning for that uh, contingency. Um, and also we've seen in the headlines, you know, South by Southwest, the Houston Rodeo, all of that has been canceled. Um, and it's caused a lot of anxiety and worry. Um, and it's caused a lot of pain, real pain for people financially, um, socially, emotionally, psychologically. Um, and I want to take a moment to acknowledge that, um, I know a lot of people are suffering financially because of this. For example, a lot of people who were going to sell animals at the rodeo and the auctions there, a lot of kids are going to miss out on that money um, that they use for college and they use um, for maybe a car that they need or the equipment they use to raise the animals and to, to make back their money. 
Um, I know a lot of individuals are losing income because they work the rodeo or they sell stuff there. A lot of people around our professional sports leagues are going to lose money. And I'm not talking about the athletes who are paid millions. I'm talking about the people who work the concession stands, who sell stuff in the in the gift shops, who sell stuff outside, who are taxi and Uber drivers, all those people who make money, not a ton, but that's their living, um, is around those professional sporting events. They're going to be struggling as well. And just people in our own local communities are going to be hurt because you imagine that if people stay home for two weeks um, and don't go shopping much and don't go out to eat and don't go do these things, then, then those businesses are going to lose income. People are going to lose tips, et cetera, et cetera. And so as we talk about who are the least of these, right? Uh, in this passage, Jesus is saying we need to care for the least of these. Some of the least of these are these folks who are going to be struggling financially for the next few weeks because their job is dependent on people moving and shopping and um, spending money and going to events. And so we need to think about those folks and how we care for them. Now, this is not to say that it's wrong what we're doing. I think social distancing is really important um, because uh, we don't know a ton about COVID-19. Um, we don't think it's terribly deadly, uh, which is great news. But what it could be is really disruptive to our healthcare system. Um, so, for example, in some places, a lot of people who are in their 60s and above need to be hospitalized. And because of the ratio of hospital beds to population, um, very quickly our hospitals could be overrun and our clinics could be overrun and our doctor's offices and everything else could be overrun with people who are sick with this disease and need care. Um, they're not going to die from it under normal circumstances, but they do need care. They need oxygen. They need telemetry. They need, um, you know, extra medical care. And I'm forgetting the terms, forgive me. Um, but, and if we can't provide that, then they can be in serious trouble. And this is happening in nor northern Italy already, um, where people, they don't have enough hospital beds. So they're having to choose, okay, who gets a ventilator, who needs it, and who doesn't get one, and they still need it, and who gets oxygen, and who doesn't. And the people who, who don't get that um, uh, are in some cases getting sick and dying. And that can happen here. And so that's one of the reasons we do this social distancing is to give our doctors and nurses a chance um, to help spread out um, the infections um, so that people can be treated as they are needed and hopefully reduce the number of infections and the number of serious illnesses um, so that our system doesn't get overwhelmed. Because the secondary effect of that is also important. If the hospitals are full of COVID-19 patients, then what happens to the people who have a heart attack or have a stroke or who have a really serious injury that can't be seen as quickly and get triaged um, and can't get on the ventilator and the oxygen and the medicines and all the rest? Um, their illness, which may have not been as serious, suddenly becomes more critical, more serious, um, because time is of the essence with a lot of these things. So that's why we're doing what we're doing, and I, and I think that's important. It's good science. It's good medicine. And if you continue to listen, not to the media, but to medical ex experts in the CDC and the WHO and infectious disease experts, this is what they're asking us to do. And I, and I think it's important that we do that for the sake of our society and for the sake of our healthcare system. Um, also, people are really mad. You know, they're saying the media is overhyping this. There's a lot of um, too much emotional um, baggage put on all this, and they're not wrong. I mean, the media does over sensationalize things, but that doesn't mean it's not serious, right? Um, and there's an amplifying effect with social media because not only do we see a, 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 sto a TV story, um, we see 50 stories on our Facebook feed and Instagram feed, and that makes us more worried. But again, that doesn't mean this isn't a serious disease. It really is. Uh, and so as we talk about this theologically, too, part of the reason we do this um, as Christians and we agree to this and we take the sacrifices that come with this is for the least of these, um, because this will impact people uh, and impact their lives seriously. Um, now, I mentioned earlier, like our our vacation time was impacted. Big whoop. That doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme of things. But for some people, this really can mean life and death. And so um, we shut down a lot of our activities at St. John. We may end up shutting down completely. Again, I don't know yet. Um, for the least of these, for our 16 and over population that be could become seriously ill and die um, from this disease. And so we stop gathering or we stop shaking hands or we stop sharing the peace or we we do all this extra cleaning and and hand washing for them because the last thing i want to do and i think the last thing um, all of our people want to do is inadvertently give this disease to some of our really awesome 16 over members um, and make them seriously ill or or even 
um, have them die. Um, one pastor I know said, we're doing this, um, we're closing down for the next three weeks because I don't want to do six or seven funerals uh, next month. And I think that's really what's at stake here. Uh, and so they're the least of these, and we're helping to care for them. We do this for our immunocompromised members. We have some kids in our congregation at St. John that have um, uh, suppressed immunosystems because of um, long-term illness, because of underlying health issues. And so while my kids would probably bounce back just fine from getting this disease, this may put them in the ICU or, or it may kill them. And the last thing I want to do is um, endanger the lives of some of our kids for the sake of our convenience, because that's what a lot of us are going to be sacrificing here. We're going to be sacrificing our convenience and our comfort and our ability to move freely for a short time. But we're doing that in order to think about the long-term care of our elderly, of our immunocompromised, of the least of these in our society today. So if you want a theological way to think about this, um, social distancing is not just good medicine, it's not just good science, it's also good theology and the fact that we are doing this for the least of these. So again, as we talk about the people we're trying to care for, we're looking after those who are struggling financially um, through this crisis uh, and because of the social distancing that needs to happen. We think about those who will be most affected medically by this, uh, and we think about how we need to react to them and what Jesus calls us to do. In the gospel reading, you know, the righteous are acting, act, asking the king in this parable, hey, when, when did we see you, you naked, and you hungry, and you in prison, and you sick? Like, we don't remember any of this, Lord. And the king says, well, but whatever you do for the least of these as a member of my family, and of course, Jesus is talking about the whole of humanity, whatever you do for the least of these, you do it to me. So as we do all these things, um, it's fine if you're upset about it. It's fine if it's causing a lot of anxiety. It's fine if you even think it's overblown. That's fine. I'm not going to tell you not to feel what you feel or, you know, tell you you're a terrible person because you think that. You're not. Um, but if it helps, think about this. You're not just doing it because the government says so. You're not just doing it because the media is, is sharing that. You're doing it because this is what Jesus calls us to do. You're doing this for the sake of the least of these, the least of these that you know. The least of these are the elderly neighbor that is down the street or in your church or in your social group or in your family. You're doing it for them. You're doing it um, for the immunocompromised adults and kids who cannot get this disease uh, because it may put them in the ICU or it may put them in the hospital or it may put them in the grave. You're doing it for them. And you all know people like this. You may just not realize it because most of the time they, they're fine. But when something like this comes around, it's really a danger. You're doing it for them. Um, and you're sacrificing your comfort, um, your convenience, uh, and even some of your financial wealth um, for their sake. Um, this will affect people, and that's real. Um, it might affect our church. Um, thankfully, we're, we're a church of a lot of ranchers and farmers, or that's in our heritage and in our blood. Um, and so what do we do? We put money away for a rainy day. So St. John will survive. We'll be okay. It's going to affect us, I have no doubt, um, but we'll survive. Um, so think about those neighbors. And, and the last thing I want to say is, is do check in on people. Um, if you have an elderly neighbor nearby, go check on them. Um, make sure they're okay. Um, you know, going and seeing one person isn't a horrible thing. Um, if you feel sick, don't do it. Um, but do call, do check on them. If you can't go physically, call people. Call your elderly relatives who might live alone. Call people in your neighborhood you know that are by themselves. Um, call people who are stuck inside with their kids um, who have immunocompromised issue, or maybe just are stuck inside with their kids, which can be stressful enough, or so I've heard from friends. Um, check in on them uh, and let them know that you care about them and, and make sure they're okay and they don't need anything. And if you are a good, young, healthy person like I am, maybe offer to go shop for them, to go get them their medication, to go get them some groceries um, so that they don't have to leave the house. Um, and again, if you know someone that needs help that you can't help them, call the church, uh, call me. Uh, and we'll see how we can help our neighbor. And I think that's what's going to get us through this in the best possible way, um, that we're willing to social distance ourselves, not just because it's good science or good medicine, but because it's good theology, that we care for the least of these in and around our neighborhoods. We don't have to save the whole world, right? Jesus is going to save the whole world, and we don't have to take care of the whole world. Um, but let's think about our neighborhoods, our communities, Belleville and Austin County, and see what we can do here locally. Um, so for now, um, that's it. Next week, again, we will be set up online much better than this 
Um, and also um, go right now, like our Facebook page, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you want to keep supporting our ministries and you can't give an offering in person, you can always go on our website, um, look at the top, you'll see giving there, or you can go through our app uh, and give that way to help um, keep the income going because we still have bills to pay at the church. We still have staff we want to keep paying. Um, so please, if you want to support our ministries, you can do that as well. But in the meantime, um, hang in there. Um, do not panic, but keep being prepared. Uh, trust that God will see us through this and trust that one of the ways that God will see us through this is by all of us working to care for the least of these. God bless and have a good week. Bye now.